Good morning and welcome to my craft desk. Today we're making a little pouch from either book pages or scrap paper and they look like this. So they have collage on the outside, I've made quite a few, they're a little bit addictive. And inside they have three pockets, one, two, three. And you can see from all these little goodies I've put inside, they've got quite a lot of space for including all sorts of either happy mail or other ephemera. So they're big because of the way that I've designed them and I've given them an extra hinge to give them extra depth. This video is part of a fantastic collaboration that's been put together by the wonderful Rachel of Rach and Bella Crafts. And what we're all doing is sharing our tips, tricks and hacks for making your junk journaling more time efficient, easier and just more fun. So in the spirit of that collaboration, I thought I would try to do two things at once. So as well as working through these various process steps, which are in my Pinterest page or on my Pinterest page, I'm also going to share my own five top tips for collage whilst I make one of these and cover it with beautiful papers. So the first thing we're going to do is choose a couple of pieces of paper to make the pouch. So to make the external part of this pouch and then also one piece of paper to make the component parts of the pocket that goes inside. And you can use book pages. So I've used book pages for the interior, which makes it a lot cheaper, I think, than using maybe expensive cardstock for ephemera holders. I can also use scrap paper for this. So the exterior I've chosen to use just a piece of copy paper. So I'm going to use a piece of A4 paper that is 29.7 centimetres by 21. But I'll give you a bit of method that allows you to use any of your book pages because it's more about the relative size of the internal piece of paper for the pocket relative to the outside than it is the absolute size for this. So hopefully it'll be enough to help you to use any of your own book pages, which are what I really want you to be able to do. So I am going to use this larger piece for the exterior of the pouch. And I also need a piece of paper for the interior that for me is going to come from this book of quantum physics. So let me just tear a piece out and show you what I mean and why this is going to work for me. It's going to work partly because I just like, I like seeing numbers and equations on pieces of paper. It's just my thing. And this does have it on it. So I'm going to try to preserve a little bit of that. But basically you want the piece of paper that you're going to use for the pockets to be just a couple of centimetres narrower. So you want about a centimetre here and here wider than this inner pocket piece. And that means that when we come to fold this, this will sit really snugly as pockets inside here and will just work absolutely perfectly. So obviously if your book page for the pocket is just a bit too big, widthwise, you can trim it down. You can see I've got little holes in my scrap paper here. It's just something really old. It doesn't even matter because we're going to collage over it. So we've chosen our book pages, well our scrapbook paper and our book page to make the item. What we need to do as step two, which we're on already, is just some really simple folding and snipping to create the pouch. Now don't be put off by the number of bullets I've put on here. I've tried really hard to make this a number of process steps that you can follow if you want to come and do this after watching this video or maybe come back to the video, save it and have another go. And as I say, these will be in my Pinterest page so you can reference these and maybe put this video on and have a go alongside. So to start with, I'm going to do some folding using the piece of paper that I'm using for the exterior. And we need to make some horizontal folds so that the top flap overlaps the bottom and the bottom 
flap. This has got, for my piece of paper, about six centimetres of gap between it and this upper hinge. And what all of this will allow us to do is obviously have a little pouch-like thing that we can add a closure to. But it gives us enough space to add these interior pockets on a stepped basis which means that we've got a lot more space to add our happy mail or ephemera. So for an A4 piece of paper, I need to fold up so that this bottom flap is seven and a half centimetres and I need the top flap to be nine centimetres and that means that the back is about 13 or so when you add it all up. But as I say, the key is that for whatever your piece of paper you need the top to overlap the bottom, so it is indeed going to be a pouch that we can bring together like that. And we need the lower flap to leave maybe five or six centimetres between it and the top fold so that you can have plenty of room for putting things in. So whatever the size of your piece of paper, maybe adjust the dimensions accordingly. Let's just measure out on my A4 piece and then do the folding for that. So I need seven and a half centimetres up. And I need nine centimetres down. And these don't need to be absolutely spot on, but it just needs to allow a certain amount of space when you come to do the adding of the pockets inside. So I'll fold that down and it, it doesn't really matter which side you have as the inside of your pouch. I quite like seeing some of this text, so I'm going to have that on the inside and cover up the plain side. I just really like it. So that will go underneath, that will go on top. And now what we need is to add some flaps along the side here. And the key for these flaps is that when you fold them in, they allow still your internal pockets to fit snugly. If I just eyeball that, I can see that I need to fold in about a centimetre either side. So I'm going to do one side. Let's fold one side in. ye trusty item for making that nice and crisp. And then what I'm going to do is take my second piece and just tuck it in so that I can see where I want to fold, maybe even make a little mark. And my tip at this stage is you can give yourself a millimetre or two of grace so that just make sure the width of this paper when we've folded the flaps is not too narrow to allow that this page to fit in. I want to take the corners off the bottom and the top so I can do that straight away. This is just of the flap and again what this is going to do is just make sure things don't stick out. I'm going to go round the horizontal just up to the vertical, basically cutting either side of a horizontal fold as far in as the vertical. I'll take a snip off there and do exactly the same on the other side. It's a bit like making our standard envelope at this size, side at this point. Along there. Snip, snip. Okay, and I'm going to glue one of them down. So here we have trimmed small pieces of pie from the corners and around the fold crease lines. So I'm going to glue down the side flaps on the top here. So the side flaps that would be at the top flap here. Let's just glue those down. I don't need them. I don't cut them off. I think all strength is better when it comes to a project like this. I do tend to try to preserve 
as much of the paper as possible. I'd rather glue things down and keep them. And actually at this point we can say hurrah that we've already done steps one and two. So what we're going to move on to is that second piece of paper and create what we need for the inner pocket. So to make the pockets in the middle we also need to do just a little bit of folding and we're going to fold in a way that we've got a really pretty stepped basis here giving you lots of access to put lots in and we're going to add some hinges to make these easy to open so you can really add a lot of stuff it's lovely. So we said that the bottom flap is seven and a half centimetres in this case so what I'm going to do is use my book page here to create the pocket so that I think I'll choose the one with the ooh, lovely graph on the back there I like that this needs to be a couple of centimetres taller than this bottom flap so that means I need nine and a half centimetres my seven and a half plus two and then I'm going to make the back flap another two centimetres again so you can see that the reason we wanted about five or six centimetres here was to allow us to have this step basis with about a couple of centimetres difference between each of these gradations. So I need to just measure nine and a half centimetres to begin with. So I'll measure down from the top, give myself nine and a half, fold at that point. And if I fold this way using the top, then any text that I see is the right way up, which I quite like when I can remember to do it that way. And then I want the back to be another two centimetres higher again. So let me just take another two centimetres up. About there. And again, I'm not going to tear this off. I'm just going to fold back where that mark is. So that my back pocket is going to be two centimetres taller again. And in fact, I'm going to be quite cunning and fold this forwards which means that when I glue this top bit down lift that up just glue this down the text will also be the correct way up it's magic isn't it so folding that down so I end up with a pocket that's going to have upright text here and here this one will fit neatly inside my little exterior here and I'm going to have a pocket here, a pocket here and a pocket here. So I create three pockets all of which are accessible. So for decoration I also like to have just this little, not quite even, a half circle. I, I clip out from a punch a bit less than half a circle and I decided on some of these, some of them I've done it on the front pocket and sometimes I, I don't like to but I'm going to just punch out a little bit of a half circle while I remember so that is nearly 18 centimeters so just a bit less than nine go about there make a mark on both of the top and the bottom take, take a hole punch and I'm going to take a little bit out there and the layer above like that and then what I want to do is add my hinge so that this middle pocket here has got plenty of capacity so I'm not going to just glue the front to the back I'm going to add a little hinge and it really really does make a difference to I think both the strength and the durability of this pocket so it's nothing more than a bit of paper on either side so that's one a bit of scrap paper so a couple of little rectangles so just fold it in half quite neatly and it look, looks like I need to just need to trim that down a little bit, take a little bit off, like that. Same on the other one. Just trim it down. 
fold that in half and I will take my glue, possibly my thicker glue, here we go, my Pret, and I don't have warping on what's a relatively thin book page actually. So a bit of glue, open up this and take the hinge and stick it to the front so that you don't go higher than the front but do try to go quite close to the edge and again that will help with the strength and durability of this so let's just do that again glue on one side and stick that to the inside of the front pocket all the way to the top and to the edge so that's nice and neat I can now add glue on the back of both of them and just bring this up, fold it up and settle that down and that gives us our inner pocket like this and I can now use this to just do a little bit more trimming on here so take your inner pocket and just position it right in the bottom crease and this is going to tell us, let's do it again, get it butted right up to it, like that. Because we did our measuring earlier, we know that the flaps are going to fit right nice and neatly over the top. Take a pencil and we're just going to cut a little bit of this middle flap off so it's not visible. I can do it with a pencil line. So I'm just going to draw a line that is a little bit below where this top pocket comes up to. So I'll snip that. Again, don't cut it off. Just run a little scissor line up to the vertical fold. Take your glue and just press that down. We're just going to get it out of the way so it's not in the way when we come to attach our pocket. And if we check our process steps, I think we might find that we've done a lot of these we've created the inner pocket so we're at the stage where we can create a hole for a closure so we're already thinking about the details and then we're going to do the collaging and I'll share some of my collage tips tricks and hacks so the closure on this is quite strong and I just use some little circles that I've decorated and punched out of card or multiple layers of book page that I've glued together I just want to put a hole in the right place at the moment to make life really easy for when we have collaged the exterior. So all I need to do is hold my top flap down over the bottom flap. I know it's not easy to see with white paper, but I want to make a mark in the middle, not far away from that top flap so it will tuck under nicely and put a hole in. And this is just going to help us get the pin in, get the the little pin in later when it's been collaged. So I've got a hole but I'm not adding anything yet because what we're going to do now is have a lot of fun just adding some lovely papers to the front and the back and just oh, just having fun with our scraps. I now have a whole load of tubs of goodies around me on my desk because the first tip that I want to share, and these are just my tips and I'm sure you've got lots and maybe, maybe share your best tips for collage efficiency and fun in the comments down below. The first tip I have, which I think is an absolute game changer, is about organisation. So I wanted to share for just a minute the organisation that I'm working through at the moment for the various bits and bobs of collage element that I use. So I like to organise by type and by size of item. And I'll be honest, although it takes a lot of effort, it's a bit of a game changer. So some of the types of item that I organise by now is birds. So I've got a little pot of birds and I cut them out when I've got the time. Even if I haven't got the time to do all of the fussy cutting, I might just cut out an element so that it's ready and in the right place for when I want to collage. Because often some of these birds, well, we might want one that's a particular colour, we might want one that's a particular size or facing one way. So I need to have them all in one place. 
And the other thing that this helps me do is not duplicate print the same thing over and over again just because I can't find it in my craft room. I like to use these little plastic tubs because they're see-through and I can obviously see a little bit of what's inside. They're lightweight, they do have lids and for those that are not overflowing like this one, I do sometimes put a lid on, but I'm okay with them overflowing because I can also flick through like this and see what I'm looking for. So this is my Andrea Allen tub, my Artie Mays tub. And as you can see, there's a lot of, a lot of fawns and beiges. There's some beautiful vintage images. So there's all sorts in it, but I know in my mind that this is all my Andrea Allen stuff. I also have an insect pot. So this is like nice big dragonflies and I've got bees. So anything that is insect related, lovely bugs, all goes in one pot. So this is a, a, a pot, a mix of pots by type, but also I'm breaking the rule there and going by content creator, by artist. I've got a pot with various images that have come from books. So this is a set of images from an art book and I was using this recently to create some nice covers for a recent junk journal. I've been doing daily junk journal January. I also think what's absolutely critical is to have a set of materials that's all about neutrals and I'll show you my box for that. Now I have some imposters in here that are more of the blue variety. However, fundamentally, this is my neutrals tub and it, and it really was mostly small pieces and I definitely dive in that on numerous occasions for collage and another well-used pot is butterflies so as well as my insect and bugs pot I have one for butterflies and basically these sit on a shelf just above me so I've got my camera overhead and then behind the camera in fact the camera is attached to a couple of shelves which my husband kindly built and they're filling up with all of these goodies and I think what's really important let's get going on some collage I think what's really important is that things are accessible so you need to be able to reach to get things easily otherwise I find that I don't use them so what's visible becomes popular. Now I am going to do some rapid collage today because I'm meant to try and get this video to be 30 minutes no more. I just love this. Don't you just love text like that? Yum yum. Shall we have it on the top? Yes I think we will. I'm going to go for big pieces today as well and another of my tips is how we collage. I'm going to try and get these the right way up. So what I like to do in order to create a layered effect of under and over, so this is another one of my tips on that sheet, is put glue broadly in the middle but not so much at the edges so I can tuck things on in under and still see a rough edge. So being as fast as I can with this It'll be speed collage today. I know that I want that upright. Let's go back to that neutrals tub and see what we can do. I might tuck something under here for perhaps or put a piece of paper on top and sideways. Let's nice rough edge. I'm not sure I've ever collaged as fast as this. That works for me. So building up the layers, thinking in terms of horizontal. So I've got normal writing upright and then writing in a different direction. 
just creating interest through texture using different fonts. But if you've got a, a neutrals tub of papers, you will find it easier because neutrals work together so much more easily. Bit of book page, maybe down here. In fact, I might put that on the front. Yeah, let's have a bit of a little bit of book page on here. I really like that. Comedy of errors as well. Yeah, that works. And any bit that comes off goes back in the neutrals tub and that will get used. I really don't throw very much away and I don't know why but that's just it's kind of part of the challenge for me. I love it. What is it that we could do that would be interesting and useful with the elements that are off cuts? So I've got contrast of size of font and across the bottom I might dive into some washi. In fact I'm going to have a a little bit on here, break up an edge, try and get that upright. Okay, I didn't glue all the way to the edge so I can still lift that. Have that there. I don't want to cover up all of my mushroom, so let's just limit that. That's a gorgeous colour. I think this is a piece from the Victoria Designs. I think we'll have that on there. It's beautiful, isn't it? All of these colours. Just love it. Fold that up. That works. And I'm going to have something on here. Just cover up that edge. Maybe a bit more of that green. Yep. And I'm going to have some sort of focal point on here, maybe with these colour tones. That's a curious. Do we think? It's a bit predictable, isn't it, a butterfly? big as well. It's a bit cheeky isn't he? So I don't want him facing that way, I'm going to use this one. So use focal points. Don't be afraid of going over the top of things you've already put on. I know I might lose some of that, but it's just one of those things. You can't make all the design decisions and get them all right at every stage. But I do like my birds to have something to sit on. Couple of pieces there. of brown. I'm just going to add a little bit and I want to cover up, break up a bit of that. These little pouches are great for experimenting with collage because you almost can't go wrong. They're nice and big but not too big so they don't take forever to finish.
cut one. Just put that on there. And for the last two steps, we're going to, having collaged the outside, glue the interior pocket pouch in and add the closure. And in fact, I think I'll do it the other way round. So we already made a little bit of a hole down here to help ourselves. So I will just take my little tweezers and poke a bit more of a hole through. And I'm going to take a teeny tiny black pin one of my closures here. Let's make a hole in that. I think the gold, this is probably Arteza acrylic gold that I've splattered on some card. Put that through. I did want to mention mindset and about setting up your environment, your desk and your mind to be as receptive as possible to having a really happy time when you collage. So I add my twinkly lights and I go at these things in a way where I genuinely say to myself it's about doing it my way and I'm not looking for trying to, to replicate other styles so that I'm not going to set a standard which means I'm disappointed and unhappy with myself which would put me off having another go. So I've always tried to, to treat my desk as a really happy place and it's a place to be kind to ourselves. I need some glue on the flap that's in the middle. One, two, three, flap, flap. I need some glue on the outside of that flap. And that is going to take my pocket, just sit it on it. And you can see that flap has created a hinge. So set yourself up with a nice drink, get all of your supplies in front of you, be a bit organised, give yourself the time every now and again to tidy your desk and keep it really nice because I think that helps too. So we've already got the hinge in the middle, a bit more glue on these flaps here and then when you've made something give yourself a pat on the back and share a picture with your friends, put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram or just Tell a friend what you've done. Bring that up. See if this works. Voila. Book page pouch with a few of my personal collage tips. I hope you've enjoyed seeing me make this and we'll go and check out all of the other fantastic videos in this collaboration. And thanks once again to Rach for organising all of this from Rach and Bella Crafts. I hope to see you soon.